Hey everyone, good morning. Um, let's just wait for two to three minutes more for others to join in. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Craig. Good morning. Good morning. We're back. Looks sure I have a tie. Looks good, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I can clean up. Let's just wait for uh, two to three more minutes. Uh, people are joining in instead. Is the background okay? I actually don't even know how to change the background on this computer, so or on this system, so whatever it is. It is actually hey, decent. It's a it's a it's a good contrast with the attire. I don't know what I can do to get rid of this. <clears throat> I'm up in a loft in our house. Do you, do you like the jeans? Does it go well with it? Hey, at least you're not in charge. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it's like how all the news people do it. You know, they sit at that desk and they read the news. And if you ever see, they're usually wearing jeans and tennis shoes. Most of the people have joined. We we'll probably get started now. After this. Glad we had that meeting with Pooh. Pooh, I seem very excited about this. He, he, they tried to develop their own system in house, and then, and it was very. I think he was pretty excited to see one that's that's pretty much turnkey. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm too. So we'll see. Yeah, I think it's next week, right? Yeah. yeah they do a lot of business. They're, they're, they're good friends. Well, tomorrow, to tomorrow for us. Yeah. Oh, is it tomorrow? Okay. Yep. Cool. Right. Let me get Start it, Sashna. Sure. Let's get started then. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on A to Z of estate planning for digital assets. I'm your host, Sudeshna, and I'm delighted to have you all here. So in this digital age, it is very crucial to consider the management and distribution of our online presence and digital positions, even after we pass away. Digital assets encompass a broad range of online accounts, files, and information that hold both sentimental and financial value. So from social media profiles, email accounts, to cryptocurrencies and digital photo albums, these assets need to be properly managed and protected to preserve your legacy and protect your loved ones. Today, our expert speaker, Craig Redler, will guide us through the A to Z pathway of estate planning for digital assets. Today, we will also explore the key aspects of digital uh, estate planning and provide you with essential information to ensure a secure future. Before we start with the webinar, let me introduce you to our fantastic panel of experts here, Craig Redler, an asset protection and wealth preservation attorney. He has experience in maintaining complex portfolios of trusts and corporations, monitoring team profitability, productivity, morale, and supervising the performance of third party providers. This webinar will provide you with in-depth knowledge of estate planning with digital assets, including how it affects families and tools for an efficient estate planning process. Along with this, we also have Sri Chintala, 
chief technology officer and co-founder of CryptoLegacy.ai, the sponsor of today's webinar. And he is also a serial entrepreneur with 25 plus years of award-winning career. So Craig and Sri, could you please briefly introduce yourself and provide us a brief introduction of today's webinar? Over to you. Sure. Yep. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sri Chintala. Um, glad to be here today. Uh, we found uh, we founded Crypto Legacy uh, with with a mission so that the families uh, have peace of mind and there is no wallets or no secrets left behind. Uh, we'll pass it over to Craig. My name is uh, Craig Redler, and, and uh, I'm an estate planning attorney. I currently operate out of Newport Beach, California. Uh, I've held positions with fiduciaries all over the world. I've um, been an attorney for 20, 25 years, and boy, I, 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 I appreciate you all having me out today. And the technology we're going to talk about is, is really impressive. Um, and because Crypto Legacy is a, a technology company. Of course, the technology for this webinar is going to be going to be a challenge for us. So we're going to do our best with that. And uh, so just go ahead and start the slides. Just give me a second. Um, okay. Yeah. So before we start sharing and uh, with this, thanks to both of you for sharing a small brief uh, introductions. So we are excited to learn with you today. So before we start the webinar, we would like for you to also answer some poll questions, which I'll add in between the slides. We'll just take a few seconds. And also at the end of the webinar, we will be hosting a Q&A section for you guys to you know, ask your questions and have any anything in your mind for clarification. We hope that by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of how to plan for your digital assets and ensure that your loved ones can access them after you are gone. So without further ado, let's get started. Craig, over to you. Yes. Okay. All right. Can you all see that okay? Sure. Okay. So uh, the A to Z uh, of estate planning for digital assets these are the things we're going to talk about this morning. Um, and let's just dive right in, shall we? Okay, so what are digital assets? Now, most people, and I, I would imagine that the the what attracted a lot of you to this call is, is cryptocurrencies uh, and various other blockchain uh, uh, products. Digital assets are more than that today when you stop and think about it digital assets or your family photos you, you know i don't know if any of you i'm certainly old enough to remember we kept pictures of our kids in an old shoebox i know where that shoebox is flip side of that coin is when we first moved over to digital cameras boy you, you lose a phone you get a new computer you have a hard drive crash all those pictures were gone now there are all sorts of solutions to prevent that today and that's that's going to be some of the things that consider in the whole portfolio of what are digital assets so it's photos uh documents of course crypto and nfts uh investments and accounts a lot of people's accounts are online i know i've been a probate attorney for a long time and people one of the things that you've got to do when you probate an estate when someone passes away is you've got to take a full inventory of the estate and by you i mean the executor the administrator whoever it is that's handling the estate has to do a, a, a comprehensive uh, uh uh inventory of the estate and people would come and go well god my, my my mom passed away years ago my dad just passed away two months ago i have no idea what they had or where they kept it and my advice back in back in the analog days was we'll just go and, and wait for the mail uh, statements would probably come in. So we can't really do that today. Um, medical information and of course the social media accounts. There's a lot of a lot of legacy material on social media accounts that that survivors are going to want to keep. So that that all is is in the larger picture of what are digital assets. So again, this is broadly a way to to categorize these digital assets and and it's an easy way to think about uh what what it is that you need to account for and prepare for when you prepare a state plan when you prepare an estate plan or, or administer an estate so of course are the assets on the far left column those that have financial value the crypto assets and and uh and and things of that nature but like i mentioned in the last slide let's not forget these these items that are under the sentimental value column either 
I, it would be a tragedy to lose family photos and and uh, uh, records of various sorts and, and kind of blur the line here a little bit. Uh, most people are getting their, their their statements for their financial accounts digitally now. So you need to make sure that you've got access to, to all the uh, uh, digital uh, assets and, and digital, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, well, you need access to a loved one's account after they accounts after they pass away. So that's that's the point of this slide. Um, so again, estate planning challenges. So some of these, just in the first couple of slides, should probably have have become pretty obvious on their own. Um, finding the assets is always a challenge. That was a challenge in an analog world, and it certainly is more so in a digital world. Uh, there's estimated one trillion dollars worth of digital assets that are just lost when when people die with and they've got the only key to their digital wallet. Those those assets are gone and they are not recoverable. So these are some of the things we want to think about and why this is important. So again, the challenges should seem fairly obvious at this point. Uh, one making these keys and access to these assets available to other people while at the same time keeping them secure from people that you don't want to have access to or don't want to give access to. So it's, it's extraordinarily important to keep a, a password somewhere where you can find them, where someone else can find them when the time comes but not before and where nobody you don't want to see them can find them. So of course uh, uh, security is going to be an issue uh, and, and as to all of those things. And then the the legal inheritance. This this deals with the, who do you want to make sure gets them. I mean, a a, a digital wallet and and cryptocurrency. I'm not telling anybody on this call anything they don't know. Is is tied amount to cash. If if I have the wallet, if I have the passwords, I have access. It's mine. There really is no indicia of title, and there really is not uh, necessarily for some of these assets a good way to make sure that they fall into into or that they get passed on to who you want them to, to get passed on. Whenever I have this conversation with people, and this goes back to the analog days, I think of a movie called Zorba the Greek. And I don't know if anybody here has seen that. It's probably before most of your time. It's actually even before my time, but I've, I've seen it on like cable TV in the afternoon. But but there, it's a story of a, of a gentleman that, that um, is an Englishman who, who goes to Greece and helps or is running a mine in Greece. And he, he employs a local guy, Zorba is his kind of right-hand man down in Greece. And there, Zorba was dating the, the town widow. Every small town in Greece has a town widow, right? And, and about halfway through the movie, she passed away. And there was one scene where Zorba and, and the, the, the English mine owner are out in front of this widow's house chatting. And uh, you see just people just filing into her house. Her body's not even dead. And as soon as the word spread that she was dead, everybody in the village showed up at her house to try and, and, and just grab whatever they could grab from her. Well... Uh, the whole purpose of probate and, and, and estate planning is to make sure that doesn't happen. You want to make sure that only the people that you want to get the assets to get it. So with digital assets, that, that presents a unique challenge uh, versus things like uh, bank accounts and, and uh, uh, cars and houses. It's, it's easier to keep track of those than it is some of these digital assets. So the, these on this slide, these are some of the things that, that you need to think about in making sure that those who you want to take, ultimately take, or, or another thing that we often fail to talk about uh, in, the, in the context of, of probate is, is not just when someone dies, but if someone becomes disabled. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is also going to apply in, in the context of disability. So imagine this scenario, and I hope this never happens to anybody here, but but unfortunately and statistically it probably will, and some of you have, have, uh, have probably dealt with it. You're, you're not dead or your loved one's not dead, but they're disabled, and they're severely disabled to where they cannot make a decision for themselves, where they cannot sign their names. They lose the capacity to, to make those decisions. Someone needs to step in at that point and continue to manage their assets, and if it's not there, there's a lot of potential for, for harm and mismanagement, and, and these are some of the things that we want to make sure that we take steps in doing comprehensive estate planning to prevent that kind of mismanagement and abuse. Uh, 
Um, the other thing that you need to consider when you do this are uh, the, the law and, and of course, leaving instructions that have to be followed. It is one thing to, to, to walk around and tell your kids, hey, when I die here, here's, you're, you're gonna get this painting and you're gonna get this, this crypto wallet. You, you need to take proper steps to make sure what you want to see happen happens. So that, that's where it's very important to leave a comprehensive plan with instructions and directives. Uh, sorry, 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 is there a question? Sorry, go ahead. No? Okay. Um, so you, 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 you want to make sure that we follow the law. Um, some of the things that come to mind as, as uh, or some of the considerations, again, of the law, uh, identity theft, again, with, with, in the digital world, it's, it's, it's extremely easy to, to um, uh, uh, have your identity stolen. Um, it is uh, some of the more conventional tools that we've been using for years and years uh, aren't, aren't necessarily readily uh, applicable. To, to digital assets. And this slide makes mention of a, a will, for instance. A, a will is a directive and a will does give the family a forum in a courtroom to make sure what you want happens to you know, get the assistance of the state to make sure what you want happens actually happens. But for digital assets in particular, uh, it, it can be uh, impractical and, and, and not necessarily uh, dispose of all the assets in the way you want. If I may add one couple of things, uh, Craig. Uh, so one important aspect is that you know most of us have a password file for all of our critical accounts. I mean, we we store it in the browsers and so on. And many families um, uh, share those passwords with with our spouses, our kids, and so on, just for ease of ease of use. And if something happens. Uh, it, it may be convenient, but if you look at the terms of services with uh, Google or any company, most of them uh, prohibit us sharing passwords because those accounts are created for us and for, for our use only. Knowingly, unknowingly, we may be breaking the law if someone, especially someone passes away, and if they had access to the bank accounts or any passwords, it doesn't mean they have the right to use that. So a simple will or a directive can help prevent that issue. It just takes three, four minutes to write that, especially on our platform, and have a protection to do that. So most most people aren't even aware that they are violating the laws, but you know it, it's probably okay. But in the sense that we want to do the right thing, and coming to the crypto assets and NFT assets, um, yeah, and uh, you don't want to mention your uh, the keys and so on on the will because they become public record, and there are several other challenges that. Uh, that present in this space. So back to you. That's a great point. Uh, probate in general, and, and there are any number of, of techniques you can use to avoid probate. But as Sri mentioned, pro probate is a is a absolute public process. When when you probate a will, and by the way, that's the only way to make a will work. Uh, a, a will does not does not have. Uh, imagine this, if you will, a, a, a um, bank account, a cash account at any bank that you may bank at, Bank of America or somewhere similar to that, uh, you're the only one who can access the money in your account and you die or you become disabled. And and your your son or daughter needs to access your money to take care of you or to pay for your funeral or just to distribute it down the road. If they just walk into the bank and say, hey, bank, this was my dad's account. My dad passed away. Uh, I'm here to get the money. The bank is not going to give it to them. So the the, the process is you have to go through probate. A court has to send the bank a letter saying it's called letters testamentary, and I'm greatly simplifying the process. But the bank's not going to move till the, the 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 kid walks in with these letters testamentary, and the bank's going to see this, and then and only then when they deal with them. The same doesn't apply to to crypto assets. If you have the 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 uh, password or or the uh, the key, you're you're in. There is no court and bank looking out for you. Um, and to that point also, if you have passwords or a key and you die or become disabled and no one else has that password or key, then those assets are probably lost forever. Um, flip side of the coin is if you give someone the password or the key prior to that happening, uh, prior to you dying or becoming disabled, and they go and access your money, to this point breaking the law, 
really there's no mechanism in place sometimes to stop them. That's where it's really important to yeah. take these steps. And that's how the digital world is, is somewhat more complex than the analog world. And we'll also add one, one, one more last point on the, on the crypto that triggered a pointer is that a lot of people have accounts in exchanges, right? Coinbase, Binance, or, or whatever you have. And most of these companies don't have any legacy plan in place at all. I mean, most banks have a transfer, uh, transfer on debt or beneficiary allocations and so on. But crypto assets, there's no designation and there's a lot of ambiguity on how to deal with it. So guess what? If you have a million dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars sitting in, in a bank and a crypto assets or, or any, sorry, any crypto exchange, and if something happens to you, get what happens to that money? It, it stays there. These institutions are not treated with, and especially if you don't have a directive or a trust that, that designates where it goes, I don't think any, any of your beneficiaries are going to have access to that. So it's a very important consideration to make, especially with the crypto exchanges, you may have money. On the other hand, if you take control of ownership of your self-custody, which is becoming really popular after FTX crash, now the onus is on you to protect and pass on your keys. And you don't want to write them down on a piece of paper, put it in your wallet. Like the few months ago, as cops found a, a car accident in, in Las Vegas. Guess what? The, the the driver died, unfortunately passed away, and they found a crypto private key on in in his wallet, and that's a public record. I don't know what, I don't know what happened to that money, but people resort to you just uh, simplify and cut corners, and don't treat it serious enough, and they would lose that money. It's back to you, uh, Craig. No. And honestly, in that Las Vegas scenario, if if the person that recovered those keys had not bothered to mention it to anyone and just slipped it in his or her purse or pocket, uh, really nobody would have been the wiser. So the, the, it's, it's almost like carrying cash. So that almost transitions into this next slide. The, these are the challenges you run into. If you've got self-custody, uh, again, you, if something happens to you, maybe the right people don't find it. Maybe the wrong people find it while you're still healthy and alive. So there are certainly issues with that. Uh, custodial accounts, it's almost in the news daily. And actually, I've actually got a, a, a pretty good uh, side business. We, we have sued successfully Coinbase probably six times for money they lost to hackers, basically, uh, and some kind of phishing scheme. Uh, and then they take their heels in sometimes, and, and they really are not not uh, quick to to make it whole when, when, when hackers uh, uh, access an account there um you know, so th these are some of the issues that you need a modern solution to and and that's what we're here to talk about uh crypto legacy this this is the uh, a system that can help you solve a lot of these problems so again for estate planning these are some of the things that that you want to deal with when the estate plan that are unique that you, you need unique solutions with crypto assets. And that of course is transferring the keys after death. Uh, you don't want to list these keys in a trust or a will. Again, they're, they're public or people that you don't want to see it may see it. Um, probate being in the public process, we've hit on that. Uh, custodial accounts, again, the, the issues of if someone gets the key and they're not the person that you want to see get it, that that is uh, going to cause your problem. There's not much that the family can do about. Um, and just failure to follow the law. So you want to set up a system where the keys are transferred securely, properly, only to the people that you know that uh, that you want to see get them. Um, you want to make sure that the, the person managing the, the transfer at the time is, is competent to do it, someone that can be trusted. Um, and that, that's yeah. these are the... Yeah, I want, to, I want to cover a few things specifically on the crypto. I think uh, the title is missing a crypto assets on the top. Uh, but so for trustees and estate attorneys, right, uh, we have conducted several hundred interviews with the attorneys and trustees in this space. Uh, the number one problem is that, you know, uh, the clients, the uh, people who have these crypto assets go to an attorney and say, hey, I'm writing a will or a trust, which is a good thing. 
And now what happens to the keys? How do they protect them? Most attorneys uh, 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 don't have an immediate solution on how to safeguard these keys in the first place and what solutions they can recommend to the customers. There's only two or three solutions in the world today as we see things may change that can handle this efficiently and effectively and they may lack the information. Second, clients may be giving the attorneys the keys trusting this and that's a risk and liability for you trustees or attorneys to hold on to any keys. You don't want to do that at all, zero. Uh, now that leaves the option. So if you compare this to your physical assets, right? Someone have uh, gold or jewelry or uh, whatever, the metals, uh, you can write your trust or a will, put them in a locker, you know, safe and where it is. Crypto is a live asset. <laughs> like it's a, it is not going to sit in a bank locker, right? People are trading, people are buying it, but uh, how do you recover and retrieve those things? And and then when the user passes away, if you are a trustee, you need to know, uh, you need to be assured that you have access to those keys so you can go on with your administration. And then the, another challenge is you may not even know if the client may have, if your client may have a hundred dollars or a hundred thousand or a hundred million dollars in their assets. So there is a dearth, lack of tools on visibility and safeguarding these things. And those are the actual challenges and solutions that we have been working in the last 18 months to bring to market to solve these problems. And our tools and solutions are specifically tailored for uh, the uh, attorneys and trustees and fiduciaries plus a self-service for our customers who want to do this directly. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm pass back to you, Craig. Jordan, I, I've worked at trust companies and I, and I will tell you that the, if, if you give, if you're, if you're turning over an asset to a trustee, the, the trustee has to have exclusive uh, administration and control. So you can't, if, if you're gonna give the keys to the trustee, and I will tell you right now, the trustees aren't gonna want a key per se, uh, too much liability. So, but if you, if you if you have an account in an exchange, for instance, you need to give signatory authority and management authority to the trustee. You can't both have it. That that somewhat defeats the purpose of the trust. So it 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 puts everybody in kind of a a, a an awkward position. And uh, again, this tool that we're talking about today is is one of the first that addresses those problems. And again, I've I've been an estate planning attorney longer than than tools like this have existed and the solutions prior to this honestly were, were not not good ones it was either give up management from the point of view of of, of the client and look for some people that's fine look i've got i've got a, a bitcoin portfolio i don't plan to trade it here trustee you you've got access to the to the key into the accounts i'm not going to touch it or if i if i need to touch it, i'm comfortable going hey trustee sell x number of bitcoin and buy something else and, and relying on them to do it uh or we we uh, uh, i would always put documents in in where, where there wasn't a third party trustee involved in a um a portfolio to literally a three ring binder i would use with a copy of, of trusts and powers of attorney and all the documents we prepare for you and uh would tell the client look just have the keys and make sure that in that portfolio uh whoever picks it up if something happens do you all the information they're going to need to to administer these assets are there well sometimes that happens sometimes it didn't if if someone found that portfolio sitting on the bookshelf when you know at a party or something and and, and misappropriated it then they did so there are all sorts of problems with with the old old time solutions so let me talk a minute about Refuta. Refuta is the Revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act. Refuta is in 46 states. I think there are two other states that have a form of it that, that weren't taken from the Uniform Law Commission draft. Um, and when, whenever you see uniform in the name of any statute, that typically means it, it came from uh, a, a drafting committee. It, it came from somebody that, that whose job it was was to make proposals in this area of law and, and states almost, you know, if you, you pick up the code in your whatever state you live in, the legislatures didn't sit there and write every word of that. Typically that's handed to them. They debate it, they tweak it, and they adopt it. So the Uniform Law Commission put out this revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act. Act most of the states have adopted it. And what it does is it answers some of the questions in terms of 
uh, the exchanges. It kind of puts their mind at ease and basically uh, uh, companies like Facebook and Google and, and, and places like that, they actually had their own policy that, that Trump refuted. And most of them have adopted policies for when something happens to the account owner, how they're handled. But it's kind of a hodgepodge and refuted doesn't answer all of, of the questions, nor does it provide a, 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 um, a, a path for, for accessing uh, digital assets. All it does is it, it clarifies that when someone dies, someone else can step into their shoes and, and uh, administer assets after a person passes. But how that actually happens and the process and, and physically what needs to be done to, to access the assets and get them distributed isn't addressed by Refuto. But it does make some of the things we're doing with with the uh, uh, the uh, crypto legacy platform possible and legal and give us a little guidance when we set it up. So these are some of the estate planning strategies that I would recommend to anyone. Some of them do not require uh, uh, crypto legacy or anybody else. They're just kind of common sense uh, steps that you should take and, and uh, take notes of these. Make sure you always know what you've got and make sure that it's somewhere where if you're not around, someone else can can find it and and make sense of it. Okay? Decide who's going to manage your digital assets. And then this goes for regular assets, too. You don't want a situation like Zorba the Greek where everybody just comes and starts taking stuff. You don't want your 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 family arguing about who's going to step up and who's not. Uh, a lot of our clients. I've got clients that fall into two camps where they sit down with the whole family and have these conversations prior to anything happening. Other clients are like, they're on a need to know basis and they don't need to know until they know, but, but make sure that if something happens to me, that they're in a position where they can, where they can figure it out. So that, that becomes a task for me as the attorney that prepares the, uh, the estate planning plan that uh, someone who, who has not had that conversation with, with their mom or dad or whoever else it is that's employing them can, can pick it up and run with it. Uh, consider creating a digital estate plan. So because these digital assets do exist in, in, in a different world than, than physical assets, um, they require additional planning and they require additional steps. So that's a lot of uh, uh, what we've talked about today. Um, there are tools you can use. Uh, there are there are uh, old timey. They're not really tools, but but just written instructions you can leave, or there are tools you can use like this crypto legacy platform, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. Um, make sure you review and update your estate plan regularly. Now, this is something that that I've been preaching for decades. When you come in and you hire your attorney and you say, "Attorney, do me a will, do me a trust," it, it's not a one time thing. You don't do a trust and forget about it and you die 30 or 40 years later. Uh, the laws change, your family changes, your legal uh, circumstances change. So it is it is a good idea always to review and update your estate plan regularly. Um, again, ensuring the digital assets are protected and accessible, that, that is kind of, a, uh, th those are almost kind of counterbalancing uh, priorities. The, the, the more secure they are, sometimes the harder they are to access. So you want to find that that right balance. Um, again, this should go without saying. You read it in the papers every day about these hacks. Strong passwords, two-factor authentication. Um, make sure passwords are where someone can access them. And uh, this one seems pretty self-evident. Just communicate your, your wishes to your loved ones. And that's typically where a, a will or a trust is still going to be useful, even, even with some of the digital solutions. You want to make sure that if you don't have that conversation beforehand, you put in writing so when the time comes, uh, those that, that have to administer the estate uh, know what it is that you're going to want to do. And it's also important to mention here that the conversation with the family beforehand is certainly useful because you are setting uh, expectations and, and I think everyone gives everyone an idea of what to expect. That typically is not going to have any kind of binding effect. So it really is important to take actual steps to make sure that your wishes are carried out. If, if you know, there's nothing in writing, and even if the family gets together and says, hey, dad, really, we all heard him say he wants this to go to this person and that go to that person. If someone wants to challenge that, it, it can be challenged. 
uh, in terms of, of things that are administered in some kind of financial institution, they're, they're not going to care. They're, they're only going to do what the law requires. If, if you don't set out what your wishes are, the state will, will fill in the blanks for you. So if you have a bank account and, and uh, it is just agreed that, that one kid's going to get all the money out of that bank account because of some, for whatever reason, and the other two are going to get assets elsewhere, if that one kid goes to collect the account, if it's not in writing, if it's not set up to where that is legally uh, legally uh, uh, mandated, and the other kids say, "No, I don't remember Dad saying that. I want my portion." They're they're going to get it. It's going to cause problems. So, and then that goes part and parcel with with conventional estate planning, digital estate planning as well. Um, so these are some of the recommendations, and these are some of the the, the tools that are out there now. Um, Sri, you want to you want to expand on some of these things? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so there are two parts to it, right? Um, you draw a line between uh, crypto assets and uh, non -monet monetary assets and non monetary assets. Uh, so, Rufada governs the. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. In my opinion, uh, don't hold me to it. But in my opinion, it didn't extend this to the crypto because when it was formed, crypto was really non-existent. It was back in 2015, 2016. So the uh, the online accounts, social media accounts, and all that, it it, it it's a simple uh, directive and allocation of who would be the rightful owner of your um, uh, online assets. Uh, the solutions in, in the market is a clocker.com uh, and a directive communications. Both are equal and no other solution in the market really refers to Fada and provides a solution. Uh, coming down to the crypto assets, uh, again, even though uh, I represent crypto legacy uh, uh, and in all fairness, there's only a handful of two or three companies that are really attempting to solve it. Uh, we would encourage you to check everything out and then compare and contrast in the merits. Uh, on that, uh, so Wall 12 is another solution that talks about the uh, inheritance and safekeeping and passing on the uh, uh, crypto assets to the beneficiaries and directors. And we take different approaches. Uh, Wall 12 has been there for a few years, uh, uh, and we are a little bit later, but we take a little bit of a comprehensive approach into it. I don't want to get into the marketing pitch there, but that's how you want to divide it uh, on designing a solution for uh, a drafting stuff for crypto as it's slightly different than non non crypto or social media accounts um one thing i want to mention here also that I, that i've neglected to mention and i'm, I'm going to mention this just because because it's me well one of the things that, that that i do that a lot of estate planning attorneys don't do is i consider creditor protection um, the tools like uh, uh, Crypto Legacy and, and uh, the, the Clocker Vault system, digital assets are like any other assets. They, they are subject to being, being uh, uh, used to, to satisfy a judgment. If someone were to sue you and get a judgment against you, these are assets that theoretically uh, uh, can be seized by creditors. So it is, it is, there are steps you can take also to put them out of the reach of creditors. If you ever become, become a, involved in a lawsuit and, and someone were to uh, get a judgment against you, we can take your digital assets through tools like these and, and put them beyond the reach of creditors. So that, that is something else that beyond the scope of this presentation, but a consideration and I'm happy to talk to anybody about offline. That's a great point, Craig. Yeah. Um, I think we covered most of it. I think we're yeah, going this for that, yeah. Okay. So I think we've got a real short little video for you that I am going to let our good friends at, at Crypto Legacy play. Like while well, Sudeshna bringing it up, we're going to show you a minute, one minute video on on Secrets Vault. That is the foundation uh, of what Crypto Legacy, what we have built. We have built is a uh uh super secure cloud locker for uh, seed phrases, private keys, and and small digital files for passwords and so on. Uh, we'll let the video play out. Uh, yeah. Go to
close the video out and I will give you there's more materials on it. Uh, we have about a dozen law firms, trustees piloting with us currently. We haven't launched to the public yet. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, connect the dot and cross the T's on this solution. Um, so I just wanted to mention that we we are in pilot and we're launching probably in a month, 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 month and a half time frame uh, to that. Back to you, Sudeshna. No question. I would encourage you to, uh, if you have any question, uh, please ask right now. Uh, I'll just give every one of you the right to speak. Just give me a second. And while she's setting that up, I'd say that the, the tools that we're talking about here, this crypto legacy AI is, is a, a, a way for people to create the directives, to create the documents that I've talked a lot about today, how to how to, to to make sure that those that are responsible for administering the estate know what it is you want and and put some kind of legal protections to make sure that, that actually happens. And there are other tools on the platform for actually storing uh, the, the the passwords and the keys. So to make sure that they're in one place, that none of them get lost, that none of them fall in the wrong hands. And when you no longer can access them, that someone else can access them and only when that time comes. So only the right people get access, make sure they've got full access and make sure that that your thoughts and, and what it is that you wanna see happen to these assets actually happens. So that's the purpose of this platform and that's the sort of thing that that prior to the existence of platforms like this, where we're kind of hit and miss and, and honestly just, uh, there was no good way to do it. It was it was just confusing, but now we're starting to to, to move to a phase where where these things are um, made easy. So I, I would encourage anyone to take a look at this system if you've got digital assets, because like it or don't, uh, one of these days uh, you're, you're going to need this. Uh, now, if all of the attendees have the right to speak, you can just unmute your mic and yeah, you can please. Go ahead with asking your questions or doubts. Good morning, everybody. This is William Shannon. Uh, I had a question, a couple of questions for Craig. And let me say, I appreciate you guys putting this on for us. Shri, it's good to see you again. Um, so I, I would like to, and I want to give that there. Um, I would like to pick your brain, Craig, maybe offline about your creditor protection. I am an estate planning attorney and probate attorney myself. Uh, specifically, I am my firm's counsel for digital assets. So I'm kind of spearheading our efforts on this. Uh, my direct question to you, Craig, um, do you recommend to your clients that are setting up a trust uh, for when they have significant digital assets? Are you recommending that they choose their trustee around that knowledge base? that they maybe yeah, look, have... sorry to cut you off but, but yes look there there are going to be trustees that have more experience in this area than others and uh you know the potential you know the potential for for uh, making mistakes is great here um there are some trustees and i i aware aware of a couple that just straight up even today are saying i don't want to deal with it we don't have the expertise we don't want to we don't want to take on the responsibility or risk so the, the, the short answer to that is, is I would say yes. Um, I have personal experience. I used to work at trust companies in the Cook Islands and New Zealand. And there are a couple of trust companies out there that I deal with to this day fairly regularly. And one of them in particular said, we don't do it. And the other one is, is, is really forward thinking on it and, and setting up smart trust and things of that nature. So certainly if you've got a client that has got a, a, a portfolio of digital assets, a large portfolio, you know, the, the trustee that's been thinking about these things is, is who you're going to want to use. If I may throw one more uh, follow up in there. So I, I had we, the last webinar we did here. I think they had a, I think his name was Alex. He was a financial planner from, from that aspect of, of things. Um, and I just want to understand logistically from the estate planner side. This is something that, again, keeping under the guise of a trust. We're going to prepare mm -hmm. our trust as normal, do all your supporting documents, all of that good stuff. Uh, but logistically, to get the digital assets themselves into that trust, 
uh, are we, and this is what I'm currently doing in my firm, but I'm just essentially doing, and I hate to call it this, but a personal property assignment, and I'm assigning the hardware wallet to the trust. So am I seeing, and Tree, feel free to jump in here, but with Crypto Legacy's proprietary uh, technology, is this the method? I would set this trust up that way, and then the keys themselves would be held with Crypto Legacy, and that's how we would kind of set this up for our clients. Tree. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, great question, uh, William. Yeah, the Crypto Legacy uh, uh, handles the secrets, the seed phrases and, and passwords and whatnot, right? So the any uh, seed phrases, mnemonics you want to store in Crypto Legacy and then make sure that the trustee allocation, the person who can unlock that vault, in our platform matches with what's in the trust so you want to make sure that those are aligned uh and and so that uh there is a legal backing so i so hope that answers your question and craig you can take on the legal side I, I would add to that depending on what the purpose of the trust is so given your scenario you assign the wallet to the trustee technically legally that 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 may work when it comes to administering the state. The problem that I see there also is if the client presumably still has the access to, to the wallet and access to the seed phrase and access to the keys, have you really turned it over? So I'm looking at it from a creditor protection point of view here. One of the, one of the, 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 the keys to making creditor protection work is, is access and control. So I do this assignment and I assign my crypto wallet to the trustee. The trustee theoretically owns it, um, but I still have it and I'm still buying and selling and trading on it every day. And someone comes to sue me down the road and they, they, they want access to those funds to satisfy the judgment. And they say, all right, give them over. And I say, well, I can't. They're not mine. They belong to my trustee. If, if you look at what's been going on in reality, though, I still have the seed phrase. I still have the keys. I've been trading on the account. No court's going to buy that. You follow what I'm saying? One, you're not getting exclusive. Yeah, so you're not getting exclusive control to the trustee is is the problem there. But it, my, my last follow up, and I'll, I'll let other, other other questions come. But it, it's still as a function of assigning the digital asset to the trust. Uh, that is functional, and that, that's is that how you and I, I don't need to to pry anything from your firm internally. Uh, but is it uh, assigning a hardware wallet to the trust, not the not specifically the trustee? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. it. It's like anything. If if you set up a trust yeah. and you put a schedule on it and say the trust owns the following assets, and the, it, theoretically, yeah. that under some code somewhere that probably works, but I wouldn't want to defend it in court. You know, you you want to do the re, you want to do the retitling. And because I these assets, I, I appreciate you guys taking those questions. Thank you. And these assets don't necessarily have titles, which is which is why something like uh, the the tool that you know the crypto or the the, the vault that Sri's talking about is is a really good tool for that. It solves all those problems. I think I think there are several nuances. Maybe maybe that will be a good um, follow up uh, webinar on on these practical issues on dealing with. The, We'll, we'll think about that. I, I think uh, there's no black and white. And one, one other thought was going through my mind. Again, I'm not an attorney, but <laughs> just the question is that uh, maybe you can have a uh, uh, trustee and the, and the backup trustee and so on. So for, from crypto legacy point of view, we ensure that whatever is in that your locker gets transferred over to whoever you designate. We kind of stay behind the legal line, I think, where the attorneys can help making sure that whatever the transfer is, is legitimate and it's it's it'll stand up in court and so on. So there may, there may be a few custom things that we need to do, but uh, we solve the problem of uh, moving the uh, secrets from one person to another person in a safe and secure way. That's the first big help that we provide. And then the legals uh, will, will kind of follow along. And, and by that scenario, again, if, if everybody agrees, if, if everybody involved, that is to say that, that the, the owner of the asset and the beneficiaries of the asset, everyone agrees that uh, that's how it is. Now that the, the successor trustee has access and they're per the, the documents or per a directive, it's supposed to be distributed as follows. You know, you're, 
it, it'll work. The problem is if someone wants to make uh, give give everybody else a headache, it opens the door for that. And I'm probably not explaining that very well, but people who've, who've uh, run estates, who've administered trusts or run probates can probably relate to all that. Thanks, William. Thanks for asking. Uh, Craig and Sri, there is one uh, question which has been put up in the Q&A section by Marty Jensen. So it follows like, how can trustees address increasing need to demonstrate compliance with corporate transparency acts along with AML issues? I can I can chime into it. Great question, Marty. Uh, so there's another advantage with, with the solutions like Crypto Legacy and others is that uh, make sure that there is a audit trail and the compliance that can support the compliance. So we do audit trail on our system right from when the user uh, provides, uh, protects their keys and who are the beneficiaries and so on. Every change and everything will get written uh, onto the audit trail. And, and, and also on our platform, we also plan to write this in blockchain if the user wants it, uh, because um, I don't want to get into geek out on the technicalities of it. Anything written on a blockchain is a, is a done deal. So there is no one questions it. Everybody accepts that that is, that is the truth. Uh, so we uh, so that's an added advantage. So from compliance and regulatory point of view, we have several plans on um, creating a trustee centric platform where they can ad I won't say administer, but where they can have access to these assets, their cost basis, and so on. That's going to be a big next challenge for trustees once they solve the uh, asset protection point of view, uh, key protection. Now, how, how do they how do they comply with the rules once they access the keys? So what do they need to do? How do they transfer the beneficiaries? All that part is as a uh, uh, crypto legacy 2.0 version, which we are actively thinking that will come later later this year, early next year. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very important from a compliance point of view. I mean, these these rules are are still being shaped, but uh, having uh, having the, uh, uh, having the uh, trail is always a good thing. And that, that tools like this really assist in in that area. And and back circling back to the first question, you know, having a trustee that's comfortable and and, and knows what it's doing, um, this all kind of plays in in terms of of making sure that all the compliance boxes are checked. Thanks, Sri. Thanks, Greg. Uh, yes. So, Marty. Yes, the the session will be uh, is already being recorded. It will also be uploaded on YouTube, and also we will be sending you a personal email with the link. Thanks for asking. I hope your question is answered. If in any case you have any more follow up questions, please feel free to use the Q and A section or speak up. Appreciate everyone's time. All right, I would say um, we have a hands-on demo of our platform. It's invitation only. So we have a few slots left. Please do uh, sign up for 25th May. We're actually going to go cover uh, the, how the technology works. Platform, you don't need to be a techie to see it. And uh, you kind of abstract a lot of critical components into it and make it uh, useful or user-friendly for consumers to use. Uh, so it'll be a good, good intro. If you are dealing with the uh, crypto uh, clients of crypto assets, uh, I definitely want to be there uh, for us. So please do sign up. Uh, and I think we have a few slots left, and it's going to be a very limited group uh, to showcase the solution and invitation only. Thanks, Sri. Thanks, thanks, Greg. So uh, before we end the webinar, we did love to invite you to a live demo, as mentioned by Sri, for the crypto legacy. So you can understand how it can benefit you and your clients regarding the estate planning and digital assets. So the demo is happening on May 25th. It's Thursday at 9 a.m. CST. I will be sharing you the link where you can register for the demo session. And also, after the webinar ends, you will be redirected to the sign-up page for the live demo. And in case you miss that, you will also we will be sending you an email as well. 
So I'm just sharing the link with you in, in the Q&A section. Here it goes. That is the link right now. So, <clears throat> all right, everyone. So, uh, lastly, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And I would like to thank Sri and Craig once again for answering the questions as well as for the great presentation and learning session. It was a pleasure to have you all with us. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again in our next webinar. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. William, have a good day.